I welcome Peter Haaf to the HKW Talks on the Anthropocene. He is Professor of Geology and Civil Engineering at the Nicholas School of the Environment at Duke University. Welcome, Peter. Yes, thank you. Glad uh, to be here, Ben. You are a member of the Anthropocene uh, Working Group, with, who has yes. their first meeting, analog meeting, so to say, yes. here at the house. Uh, it's really an uh, honor and pleasure. And um, you are contributing uh, to the discussions of this group with a concept you called technosphere. Can you a, a little bit elaborate on the notion of technosphere and to which extent this is different from the concept of the Anthropocene or adds a new perspective to the Anthropocene? Yeah, <clears throat> yes, I think uh, maybe a, a new perspective would be uh, uh, the interpretation you might, you might give that um, I had been uh, in working in sort of classical geology and geomorphology, um, increasingly uh, interested by the uh, penetration of, uh, of, uh, of human uh, disturbances and the growth of technology, the spread of technology into areas that years before I had not seen any such evidence. And um, I began to wonder that whether working on purely natural surfaces was really um, the place that uh, I should be spending my time, and, and, and thinking about it more, I became increasingly impressed, not only with the, of course, uh, impact of the number of uh, people uh, who, through their activities, are impacting the earth, but the, but the effect of the, of the new technologies continuing to evolve at a, at a rapid rate, and how that whole joint enterprise of humans plus technology um, was was forming a, a very significant condition uh, on the surface of the earth that uh, really had no analog in, in the past. So um, say, well, what is it that is a, a kind of a global phenomenon that um, is very dynamic, that consumes a lot of energy, that changes the earth very significantly and at a rapid rate? What, what else do we see in uh, kind of earth history that is reminiscent of that? And one of the set of uh, such examples would be the various spheres, uh, the atmosphere, uh, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, the biosphere. And uh, so it seemed that uh, you might call this new sphere the anthroposphere, as some people have. Uh, I think that uh, technology is, pe people have been around a long time mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to technology, but there was no impetus to uh, uh, to, to consider the geological impact until recently. So I think that the role of technology is kind of un, undisputed. And, and so as, as a name to cover this whole global Earth system, uh, I chose the name Technosphere because I think it has a lot of, if you look in more detail, a lot of overlap in, in what it is and, and how it works and possibly its implications to some of the other spheres. Uh, in your papers, you say uh, at, at one point, uh, technology is a new biology. Can you elaborate on that? What I meant by that is uh, not that it's playing the same role as biology or that it somehow changes. It, technology does change and adapt yeah. and, and evolve. Um, that wasn't it really so much as now for the first time in a very long time, there's something completely new in the world. There's been oceans for a long time. There's been uh, rivers for a long time. There's been rain for a long time. There's been mountain building, building for a long time. Um, at one point in the history of the Earth, there was no life, and then there was life, and that was completely new, yeah. a new thing in yeah. the world. So if you, if you go from that point, of, from that point in time forward, uh, I think you basically come up until about the time that humans plus plus technology began to emerge when you realize, oh, there is something really new in the world now. And of course, it also has to do with human self-reflectiveness mm. and, and human intelligence. Um, uh, and, and then, of course, technology came out of that. But it just, uh, that was kind of a short phrase to uh, indicate it's not just a change in degree for how yes. the Earth works, it's a change in kind. Exactly. So, so there is this big difference between, let's say, the bio, biology and technology, 
but also, as you mentioned already, uh, humans, let's say, right from the time they started to cultivate the earth, uh, developed techne, uh, so they developed technologies. Would you say we are living in a world where technology plays a qualitative different role than before, or just quantitatively? Well, it certainly is quantitatively, but um, I'd say it's also also qualitatively in that uh, it's it's not just that through technology humans are increasingly able to impact impact the earth. The Anthropocene is often kind of thought of uh, as 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 uh, the the uh, the sign of a human impact on the earth. But I think that once technology had gotten to a certain phase. Uh, there was a uh, basically an order for large scale technology with all its connections and energy consumption and involving almost all of the people in the world in order for that to work to actually physically exist there has to be a larger scale um, more diverse kind of form of of organization that that appeared uh, to to make that that make that happen it's kind of a self organization process and once that happened there was some transition and uh, then humans are caught up in that. So yeah. there's a dynamic rolling wave that's going mm -hmm. along, and mm -hmm. it's not just humans using technology. Mm -hmm. so, so that's, that's there, oh, that's more yeah. quantitative, but there is this kind of embedding factor where mm -hmm. humans are embedded in the technology. Mm -hmm. They don't control it, and it kind of rolls on and, and okay. drags them along. W without okay. humans, it would, it would disappear, but okay. um, it's, not just, it's not just a linear sum of those okay. two. We come back to that uh, okay. in, a, in a minute. Um, in the context of the Anthropocene discourse, there is also the issue, is there a golden spike? Is there a specific moment in history where developments uh, started which really triggered this kind of qualitative change? From the notion of technosphere, could you identify such specific moments of history? No, you know, if you look at... I, I, I don't think so. I think it's more of a... Uh, you know, whether there was a tipping point where all of a sudden this uh, the technology turned on. I mean, it was human when human intelligence reached a certain level, then the possibility kind of turned on. I don't think the actual phenomenon turned on. You know, if you go back and uh, there's a well-known book called The Education of Henry and Henry Adams, in which American uh, diplomat and, and author, in which he talks about the acceleration of technology, like writing at the end of the 19th century. And uh, he sort of traces, well, where is the beginning of this? And he kind of traces it back to, uh, I think, cathedral building in mm -hmm. France in I don't know what this, yeah. 12th century, I, I, I forget. And, and, and then he says, but you know, also um, a stone arrowhead is as convincing as a steam engine. Mm -hmm. So it just it gets smaller and smaller and narrower and narrower, yeah. and, but it, it, it has, a, has kind of a diffuse yeah. beginning. <clears throat> Okay. Um, we are producing at the moment a video which is going into the internet, which is, of, of course, part of the technosphere. Uh, there was, in the 2030s, um, uh, Vernatsky, who uh, used or developed this term of noosphere, uh, being, let's say, uh, the, a word which is the outflow of human consciousness, so to say. Does that relate to the technosphere, or is the technosphere concept quite different? Well, I think Vernadsky actually um, developed the idea of the biosphere, and it was people like Teilhard de Chardin yes. who did the, the uh, yes. kind of popularized anyway, the, or developed the idea of the noosphere, the sphere of knowledge yes. and of an, of an intelligence. But yeah, that's. Um, I think these are early um, recognitions of this phenomenon, this kind of, you know, what is what is going on, oh, that the world yeah. is not the same as it was before. You know, technology is the new biology, that's okay, right. that's, uh, you know, kind of a slogan per, per, perhaps, but I think these are early recognitions uh, and articulations of the same yeah. effect that we're talking about here. You started already to uh, develop on the concept of technosphere saying uh, that humans created it, and now it reached a point where it develops its own logic to some extent, and so we become victims of developments we induced ourselves. Can, can you give an example of that? 
to, to one phenomenon where you could argue humans created this kind of techne, but they don't control it anymore. Yeah, I mean, we think of we're free agents. We don't have to be here, right? Nobody forced me to come, come to yeah. come here, but the whole spectrum of of humans plus technology plus all those inter inter inter, inter interfacings and and forces as they went across the Atlantic and kind of got my attention and then pulled me over here. And we're sitting. So here you are we pu can't, pulled here by technology. We're pulled here by the no, not by technology, but by the the um, uh, the set of relations that defines the technosphere. So we're, uh, I mean, can we just get up and, and leave now? Yeah, of course you yeah. can. Well, okay. <laughs> but I don't you know, wish can, to can do that. Can the cameramen <laughs> just, just leave if they want? No, they can't. No. And, and, and there's a proximate cause for that because, you know, they have a job here at HKW and, yes. and, and the, they need to do their, their job well. But uh, so, so there's always a proximate cause yeah. which, um, you know, this glass of, of water is here for some you know some local reason yeah. you can identify but then there's there's ultimate causes as well as, as proximate causes and if you if you go back far enough into the investigation of ultimate cause you find there are reasons that people don't understand that are living out there in the in the tectosphere it's I mean it's not mysterious yeah. it is mysterious in that we don't understand it but it's just part of this very abstracted uh, dynamics that nobody understands and nobody controls I mean, for me, uh, an example would be playing the role or performing the role I have as a director of the HKW. I cannot decide not using the internet. It's it's not an option. I have to, to yeah, some yeah. extent, or I have to give up my job. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> so right. I, that, that no, I was you you, you, ma you mentioned in in one of the papers uh, electricity, the grid uh, in in the United States, <clears throat> that it really. Uh, it's very difficult to control it because it has a complexity where you can't interfere really and you don't know when you interfere what will be the implications of your interferences. Well, you, can't, you cannot shut down the power grid in any country that has a large power grid in Germany mm. or, or, or anywhere else. Um, I mean, you know, could the, could the prime minister, could the president shut it down? No, they, yeah, maybe for a day. Mm -hmm. And then the society would start to come un undone. Yeah. And there would be riots, and and it would just it's not it's not sustainable. So once once these large um, embedded systems um, begin to roll along and uh, and uh, connected into the power supplies, they develop their own defensive mechanisms. And it's basically it's not that people can't influence them, influence them, or locally have a large inf influence. I mean, we do have leaders. You are a leader of uh, H HKW. But um, you know, like a captain of a, of a of a ship, say say a navy ship, which would be kind of the archetypal example of somebody who's in control and is a leader. Yeah. So you can maneuver your ship. You can go into battle. You can you can discipline sailors. But you're part of some strategic plan mm -hmm. of some. Uh, there's there's some uh, higher frame of organization that kind of sets the scale for, for, for what you yeah. do. And the very highest scale is not, there is no leader sitting at the top. Oh. And so that's kind of what I mean. That, uh, so you analyze this as a scientist, mm, yeah. as a human yeah. being, you are threatened by that? I mean, you could, I oh, mean, no, uh, one, one image could be there is this big animal of technosphere taking over yeah. and you are just victim <clears throat> of this yeah. process. Okay, so you you used the word victim before. I wouldn't I wouldn't say victim. I mean, we're part. It's a physical process. Mm -hmm. We're part of it. Nobody wants the technosphere to go away, and uh, it 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 keeps us alive. It gives us many of the things that we need and and we want. That's why it's so powerful because a feedback loop has been set up where uh, people are highly incentivized to mm -hmm. keep doing all the things that uh, that they have to do on their part to kind of keep the keep the thing running. Um, I wouldn't use the word victim, but I would use the word concern that because we have cognition, we sort of understand uh, as scientists um, uh, or as intellectuals who are familiar with things like climate change, we understand the trajectory to some extent that the world is on. The technosphere doesn't understand it. It, it, it doesn't have any cognition of its own it's just it's just running according to some unknown so would dynamics you, would you say we are the co 
cognitive part or yeah, uh, you're, we're the, I would component say of the of the technosphere. We're the cognitive organs and the reproductive okay. organs. I would say yeah. of the of the technosphere. Uh, one major hypothesis or statement of the Anthropocene <coughs> is that uh, the epoch we used to live in, which is called the Holocene, is characterized by quite stable material processes, climate, and so on, and that by the uh, work of, of the anthropos of humans, uh, this uh, balance, which uh, was the basis for human life, uh, comes out of balance now. Uh, would you agree from the concept of, of technosphere that that is the case, that there mm -hmm. is an <laughs> unbalanced system now? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's accelerating rapidly toward, toward where? We don't know where, but... Um, because the future is always dark. Mm -hmm. The future is not really predictable except locally and under highly controlled circumstances for short times in, in the future. But um, we've seen many warning signals. We're going ahead down the highway at a high rate of speed. The weather is very foggy. We can't really see. There's rumors that there's a cliff ahead. And, uh, but nobody, there's nobody who has a foot on, on the brake. Yeah. So and you don't feel threatened by that? Well, I think Just you use the word you would use the word victim. victim so yeah. I wouldn't say a victim. I think it's um, it's something we're all very concerned about. Yeah. Uh, threatened? Yeah, I think threatened would be would be a good word. But is there, or could you imagine a kind of strategy, conceptual strategy towards that? I mean, of course, for example, one aspect which is evident is that these macro systems of of the technosphere are not controllable anymore because they are so complex, they, so many ac uh, levels interacting with each other, that one has to look for new technology, for new technologies, or uh, what, in which way would you argue? <clears throat> well, I think the new technologies will be deployed because that's something we know how to do, and you can see fast results in the direction you want by applying technology. The trouble is, that nobody understands what the entire dynamics is. So mm -hmm. the second-order effects, side effects, we have no idea. For example, geoengineering the climate of the Earth, we could definitely dial down the global temperature on average, but we don't really know what the, what the consequences yes, yes. of that would be. Um, so, and I think we may be forced to in, into, that, into that situation, but, uh, you know, it's not unprecedented that a that even something as uh, widespread as a sphere, uh, as we've defined them, can go through catastrophic uh, catastrophic changes, catastrophic to those systems that are existing at the time. In the biosphere, for example, about two or three billion years ago, went through a phase called the uh, Great Oxidation Event, in when where cyanobacteria began to produce oxygen, free oxygen, molecular oxygen. Uh, copiously and release it into the atmosphere. It was a new energy source, photosynthesis. It was great for them. It had, I mean, a little bit like oil wells, maybe you get this yes. new, new energy source. But oxygen <clears throat> is a highly reactive molecule. It's basically toxic if you're not uh, evolved to, uh, uh, to be able to deal with it. So there was a horrendous overturn of the biosphere at that time. And uh, those organisms that were anaerobic that didn't use oxygen. Either they died out, or they had to uh, uh, adapt, you know, adapt to live in anaerobic environments, or or to or to use oxygen. And that would have been a devastating uh, to an to a, a, an organismal observer who did not use oxygen at that time. That would have been a tremendously mm -hmm. devastating, catastrophic failure of the biosphere. But it wasn't ultimately a failure. It didn't go mm -hmm. away. So it might be that the technosphere and, and, and therefore civilization, mm -hmm. as we know it, goes through some catastrophic uh, shakedown mm -hmm. with something completely new coming out that, uh, that, that, that we can't imagine. Uh, I must say I'm really quite fascinated in which way uh, geologists now define the role of human beings, <coughs> which was classically a role of philosophers. So geologists are not only the new biologists, uh, the the new uh, biologists, <laughs> uh, they are also the new philosophers. Also, yeah. right? <laughs> well, Bernd, I've learned from from this particular meeting and, and the and, and the the uh, discourse uh, with with people at HKW leading up to this, including 
philosophers, I was, I was amazed at how, uh, and this is showing my, my ignorance probably, uh, but amazed at how, uh, how parallels, yeah. the, the yes. parallelism yeah. and some of yeah. the ideas yeah. coming out of philosophy yeah. Yeah. now with yeah. what I, yeah. I see coming out of the technosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, no, and, actually, and, for us, that was a trigger to see on the one side natural scientists uh, coming up with new ideas which relate directly to philo philosophical discourses, and the two discourses were not really related to each other. So th this, is, I, I think, uh, was really an, uh, a moving aspect for us. Yeah, and I think you see the value of an institution like, like this one here. Where else are, are you going to intensively bring together philosophers, scientists, yeah. and so on? To I think we close on that one. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> okay, Peter. Yeah, my pleasure. It was great.